I'm Thor. Welcome to the Dragon Ship. Have something special for you guys today. I'm going to have a nice little interview with my friend Ray. Ray is going to make for us a great story today. Ray, I met just over a year ago. He's an older man, much like myself, not quite as old as me. We'd say we're a generation apart, but his red pill story is quite amazing. He uh, last year or two years ago was a divorce, I think, and he had to get back into the uh, dating arena and uh, learned an incredible amount. And uh, in one year, he was able to successfully date 50 women. And when I say successful, I mean successful. Uh, the man has really used uh, his, his brain and his red pill knowledge uh, to set a high standard. He's achieved his status, his money, and his game. And I want to hear his story. And uh, please, uh, let's welcome Ray. Ray, how are you? Hey, Thor. It's great to be here. Yeah. So we met through Modern Life Dating's uh, Body Language Mastery class, which is really rather a men's mind uh, 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 mindset group and uh, men helping men achieve more in their lives than they did before. I know the, the title is a little misleading, but it is really uh, a, a mastermind group of some pretty amazing men. Uh, wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, I'd say... The body language part was probably the most minimal of the whole thing. Uh, it was really, being, it was you know, it's a group of guys really just trying to be better and helping each other out. And everybody's pretty sincere about making, like lifting each other up and holding each other accountable and not tolerating any excuses and really getting to the core of what the problem is, not just like how to, you know, do the old POA, just no techniques to get girls to, like open open up for you but to actually change yourself at your core to make yourself more valuable so you're just naturally attracting that kind of thing in your life yeah it's an amazing thing i think that uh, you're old enough that we had many uh rites of passage and social groups with men so we got past our awkwardness socially and uh now you and i are seeing that that's not so much the case with uh many of the men they're rather isolated today particularly with the uh, uh, with the lockdowns that have occurred, it's been quite a struggle to be social and, and meet females if you're single, and I'm sure it is for the females too. So, uh, tell us, uh, tell us, tell us a little bit about your background, Ray. I mean, it's pretty exciting. You and I met in person, and we got to game a little bit in person, and uh, we, <laughs> we had a blast in LA at the uh, at the Hot Dude LA Con. Uh, we got to do that again. Uh, uh, like minded guys definitely need to get together and be men. Yeah, I think we shouldn't wait till John comes back to town next time. Just get a house up in somewhere. Yeah, a bunch of guys get together. I think it'd be a great. It was. I had a blast. I had a really yeah. good time. It was nice. Uh, to all those yeah, guys. I think we have to do something like that maybe quarter there biannually for sure because that was just too much fun. Yeah, absolutely. I um, go ahead. No, go ahead. Tell us about your background, your red pill awakening. Go back as far as you need to, and what lessons you you had to learn the hard way, and where where you started on this path where. You have become this <laughs> online dating icon of an older man that ex almost exclusively dates women in their 20s and 30s. Maybe yeah, even. pretty much, which is funny because like my main right now is actually 35. But yeah, like the oldest one. <laughs> what's that? The oldest one. Still not yeah, age the oldest one, right? right. But uh, yeah, I did date a lot of girls younger, 18 to 25. Usually was the target range. I usually preferred 23 that that area but i wasn't i wasn't picky when it came to that age type of thing i just you know whoever i meshed with the best but i wouldn't say i started out that way i drew i grew up in a i had a father who was alcoholic and a mother who had a high degree of depression uh, they got divorced my mother remarried my stepfather my stepfather was awesome um he was more of what you would call a blue pill alpha he was religious but i wouldn't say he followed what the Bible said when it can. I mean, I'm sure the guy cheated on my mom, you know, he like girls just naturally liked him, but I wouldn't say he taught me the right way to be, to be uh, like attracted to girls. You know, still taught the blue pill. So when you say blue pill for anybody that might be listening to this for the first time, what, what are we exactly describing? 
more like the uh, the Disney fairy tale. I mean the Disney fairy tale where the the frog gets kissed by the princess and they yeah run, like or Beauty and the Beast where well maybe not so much Beauty and the Beast but they run off and live happily ever after and that's yeah you don't really have to do anything the rest of your life like the Disney fairy tale you meet you know that the idea that like if you're nice enough you'll meet the right girl eventually and so, so are you telling me the blue pill is just you know just be yourself. The advice that a lot of females will give me. Well, it depends on who you yourself is. Females. Just, just be you, who you are. Yeah, be when you hear what you hear, when you, when you hear that, is you hear, uh, you'll meet a nice girl someday. Just be who you are. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's be, not be exactly. authentic, right? Yeah. Be, well, I mean, authenticity works if you've got the right mindset. That's it's, where I'm going with that. So, so that brings us to the red pill, right? Yeah. So um, I will say that like my father, my stepfather was awesome. He, he got me out of my shell. Um, he really like taught me to be confident and do, do more things than my, my father was who would just sit in the garage drinking. I ended up leaving the South and becoming a career pilot in the air force. Um, I ended up getting hurt. So I got retired out early. Okay. And then I went to work in the regular government. Well, in the military service, part of the civil civilian service, and in that, that point in time, I wasn't really trying to excel. I was just trying to do okay. I was letting my, my ex-wife sort of run the show and make a lot of terms. And I ended up moving to California for that government job. And I did a couple of, I did government work for about 10 years. And I really never liked it because the people were, I mean, I don't say they just weren't, high speed. Let's just say it that way. And I ended up getting, I had some networking um, with a person who was a director at one of the bigger companies. And she got me on as a, or she didn't get me on. She got me in front of the right mm -hmm. people and I ended up going to work for them uh, about three years ago. And I'm doing really well there. Uh, that was about the same time as I wouldn't say I found the red pill. I sort of found the red pill a couple of years prior. So were you frustrated? I mean, I want to just jump you back a little bit. Yeah. One thing you said, and I don't want to go off on a tangent, but something I want to express to, to, to my viewers too. You had a stepfather that really impressed yeah. you, it sounded like. Yeah. That's that's pretty cool. You had a male role model in your life. I mean, yeah. I was, I think I was a stepfather I myself. I was definitely a stepfather myself of very young children. And I, as a single father at one time of my own children, I blended them together and one of the proudest moments of my life is when those children turned 18, they legally changed their name to my name. So yeah, that's it awesome. can be done, can be done. So it's nice to hear you say that. Yeah. And, and so now that you've moved ahead and you're in this marriage, is it, is it kind of dying out? What's, what's going on with it? Well, uh, let's get, jump back real quick to father, stepfathers, yeah. because I think it is important to note. There's a lot of things in this red pill community you have to take um, and not take like right at face value and, allow a little bit of flexibility. And a big thing you'll hear is like raising another man's son is not a, a good thing to do, but like you can see in your case, in my case, it was a great thing to do. It really added value to the world. So you can't just take these, what might be truth in some situation and apply them across the board to all situations. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade my no, 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 father, not father, father anyway. It's important. You know, as a, it's interesting you say that my experience as a single father with children that are three and five yeah. is that it's very, very difficult to, you know, here I was 28 years old and to date younger women, they didn't want any part of that. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm dating older women. And then I run into one that's 25 that had kids that are almost exactly the same age and it worked really well. But uh, yeah. it, it, it's different. <laughs> it, it, and, and for some reason, it's in the back of my mind, if you are a single father, I did have a certain demographic of ladies that were very interested. It was the ladies that only had one child and were in their 30s and saw that I was raising children. Oh, yeah, they wanted to get hooks. And trust me, that was the big, the big rush was there uh, to seeing that you're already a father. It's a, at least that was my experience some, you know, 35 years ago. The only weirdness I get from girls is uh, they'll ask me if I have kids and I make it a habit not to lie to girls any more than 
like yeah. you know, normally I don't, I'm, I don't really subscribe to the lie to them all the way. I pretty much am pretty honest with about who I am and what my intentions are. So they'll ask if I have children and I'll say, yeah, I have a 16 at the time it was 16 now 17 year old daughter. And I can see their little wheels working. Like they really want to have sex with me. And they're like, they, they hear this thing and they have a hard time with it and they can see them like processing it in their head and they're like, and then they'll come out with, well, she's not older than me. So that's cool. Like it's like they're they're just coming up with a like a mental gymnastic way to like not oh, that's very interesting yeah 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 no that that's really interesting and I completely understand one of my best friends is single and he won't date single moms he won't even put himself in that environment which is completely honorable and and a, a good choice for him to make honestly mm -hmm. uh, with the things that he is risking as he's approaching forty years old you know that's just incredible it, it's. Uh, the situation that single moms have placed themselves just when I was 25 years old. Yeah. It was kind of rare. It was much less rare to have single moms out there. It was kind of, there wasn't that many. Now that's the majority. Well, we've incentivized bad behavior at this point. Um, you know, you don't really see, and I don't, I don't really like to complain about it. I just like to point out, you don't see any marches on Washington for people demanding better, like um, divorce rights. You know, like the men have the like they have a bad shake of it in court because of divorce. You don't ever hear anybody marching on Washington about that, which is a pretty good indicator to me that I think things are sort of skewed in one way, which I'm going through that now. And I can guarantee you they are very skewed that way. Yeah, I think. Yeah, just a little bit. But you know what? It's just it's like anything else. You adapt and survive. People that don't adapt fail. Like, you know, new president, new rules. A divorce, your, your divorce is still not final, but you've been separated for a couple of years, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's she I wanted to have an easy and just work it out. And she's very resentful and spiteful. So she needed to take it to court and she created a lot of havoc and it's still going on. But I've been pretty strong through the whole thing and had to let it get me down. And it's been sort of a surprise to, I think, like, I don't think they're used to a man behaving the way I behave, which is you're, you're pretty positive mostly. So, yeah. Well, it's also I won't let them make requirements on me to do things. Like she created a bad situation with a bunch of lies, and there's like a lot of requirements on me to do certain things. And I just won't do them. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And it ended up at the end of the day, I played my cards right, and sure enough, I didn't end up having to do that. And everybody seems to be surprised that like there's this guy that refuses to do what you're telling him to do. And I told my lawyer, I am un bending on this. I am unyielding. I will not do what you are asking. And he just doesn't know what to do with me because, because he's just not used to guys just standing up for themselves. Sure. And uh, for you, man. Yeah. But it has been a hard road and it's still not over yet. But well, tell me, I mean, let's cut to the chase. You separated and you hadn't dated or you haven't been unfaithful. Yeah. You are, you know, coming out of this long-term relationship, which lasted, you know, almost a couple of decades. Right. And, yeah, uh, seven, 16, 17 years, 17 years at the time, almost when we separated. That, out, yeah. It will cost you nearly the rest of your life. You'll pay. Yeah. That. It's unfortunate because I do understand why guys would want to settle down, get married or, you know, have kids. And it's really a bad situation right now where you just don't have a lot of protection as a guy. So I don't really know any safe conduct when it comes to that, as far as. Mm -mm. It goes, but except for make sure the girl's so into you that she just worships the ground you walk on and not the other way around. Oh, uh, yeah. Or you might get stuck with that extra V tax. Yeah. And I would say um, make sure that it's clear before you go into it that you're not going to be monogamous as well. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. What's the principle oh. behind that? That's there's some red uh, pill principles around that. Yeah. I think that girls in general, and this is nothing about bad about girls. I think they just recognize that like men, if I, if a girl asked me to be monogamous and I've said this to my main who wanted me to be, I said, you know, your last boyfriend who you didn't like and you laughed at because he cried when you broke up with him. I said, how long did it take for him to be loyal to you and say he was going to be monogamous? And she said right away. And I said, exactly. Cause he wasn't giving up anything. You're, if you ask somebody like me to be monogamous, you're asking a lot of a guy that has value uh, if you're asking for monogamy because he's giving up quite a bit more. So the guy that does that, that has nothing, 
he's not losing anything. He's not offering you anything. He's just offering you what he would have given you anyway. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's an important principle is definitely, even if you don't act on it, you should still be the man that other men want to be and that other women want to be with. Well, I've, I mean, I've learned you can act on it. Oh, yeah. Really, if you are if you were truly a man of value, they're not going to leave for the most part. They No, uh, but the principle, I mean, you, you got to be that man that's capable. And if you do, you do. And yeah. Yeah, as, as far as the red pill is concerned, you're that high enough value. It's it it will be shared. Alphas yeah. are shared. Betas are not. They get rules, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure, absolutely. Um, and, and, and you found in your dating experience that to actually be true, haven't you? I mean, I've had twenty one year olds want to just date me exclusively, and I've told them no. And mm -hmm. maybe they lasted a little while. They just couldn't handle it, and they would leave, or you know, it, it didn't really matter what the reasons were. But it's just interesting at my age to tell a twenty-one year old it's cute. No, I'm not going to date you monogamously, and then be surprised because. And but I don't know why they're surprised because they like you. So why wouldn't they assume other girls like you? Sure, so I sure. think they sort of know that, and they don't know what to do with it. They're just well, not used to it. There is a huge component to to that, also making you quite attractive. Because when you're attracted to other women, that's pre-selection, and, and they're very keen on pre-selection. Hence the reason that famous people, creatives, you know, they have that pre-selection, that mm -hmm. there's a serious status or something about it that, if, hey, if all the other chickens are going after that grain, I better go after it too, right? <laughs> well, it's saying a lot about you. I mean, if, if another girl, like if a girl sees another girl wants you, she's basically seeing the fact that um, like nobody wants anybody that nobody else wants. I don't want a girl that nobody else wants. I don't know why yeah. men get upset when other girls, when other guys look at their girls. I just, I don't understand why they get mad. I, I like it because I'm with the girl and I'm like, yeah, she's with me. I actually heard a woman say one time that uh, around this subject, it was rather shocking to me because, you know, I, I you know, some eight years ago, I was rather blue pill too, but um a woman that I would have never expected to say this, but who who wouldn't want a man that can have other women or command other women and other men want to be with? I mean, she was serious that, like, yeah, the guy that can have two or three women and they're worshiping the ground he's working on is of such a high value. It's worth it. If it's yeah. that guy that nobody else wants and you're stuck with him, it just feels like death to the woman. So uh, that's an interesting it was interesting to hear that particular woman in my life say that. So um, I've, I've really learned that women keep two sets of books. One yeah. for men they're aroused by, one for men that are their boyfriends or they're just settling for. Mm -hmm. And the way they, I guess, I don't want to, well, you're not monetized. I was saying I don't want to like no. demonetize. I'll try to keep it a little bit. Like the way they go down on you is different based on which book you're in. Oh, yeah, yeah. The arousal is very difference. different for, for a woman that has unrepentant absolute desire and sexual arousal versus one that doesn't have the desire yet is aroused it's very different yeah you know yeah uh, and i guess that goes right back to our primal brain doesn't it and sexual strategy between men and women so um i mean i never i'm never mad it's still it still astounds me and i've had it happen a lot it's still like when it happens i still maintain a frame but i think about it after the fact and I just shake my head when I'll have a you know a twenty year old, nineteen year old in the bed, and they look up at me after, and they go, "You're so hot." Mm. I'm just thinking to myself, "I'm 47." You're well, okay, okay. We got to preface this for the viewers. Yeah, Ray, Ray. If we took his his fancy corporate income, his <laughs> looks, and his status, and his ability to game, Ray would be in the U.S. maybe top three percent in the world. He would be in the top one percent. So. He has some advantages there that I wouldn't probably the rest don't. And that's of, considering his income, right. that's considering his resource and his status. And then he has spent time learning red pill and applying game to that very methodically like an engineer would. And it's been pretty successful. So, yes, you, you took some of that. What, what other red pill knowledge did you come across as you started this? I know you started to date. What made you uh, start to want to date again and realize you needed to learn? one thing I did, and I would say guys that are my age shouldn't flip out about worrying about getting out there really fast. They have time. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't want to wait five years, but you don't need to worry about rushing six months. 
-hmm. before I got out of my marriage, I was getting worried. I was thinking I'm older. It's going to be harder to date. Like, who am I going to date? They're all going to be fatties. You know, this might have felt like it was all over, huh? I figured it was all over, but I, I decided I put it just as a goal. I'm going to do this. And whenever we separated, I gave myself six months to just be with myself and not date or not think about girls. And just, I mean, I wasn't trying to like improve necessarily. I was just trying to like not have a relationship of any type, just yeah. do my own thing. And then, I mean, during that time, I was still doing like listening to content. What kind? I Go ahead and plug it. Hmm, what's that? What kind of content? You can plug well, it. Actually, I'll say this: like two, like a couple of years before I ended it, my marriage ended or separated, uh, I was listening to whatever I could find, but I really wasn't finding the right stuff. Mm. I would get into like, I mean, I'd say POAs have some basic knowledge, but a lot of times when you get into POAs, they don't have really the the foundation. Uh, uh, they don't have the frame necessarily. A lot of it's tricks and nonsense. Mm -hmm. And a lot of stuff is also bad advice. If you're going to become a really high quality person, some of the stuff is just, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And then I came across Patrice O'Neill, which is a funny introduction to the red pill, but got to maintain your fishing boat. Like <laughs> Patrice O'Neill, I would listen to him on O and a, and I just listened to him over and over again. It was like, I was listening to the same thing because I knew he was right but I did not know how to in integrate it into my life. I didn't know, you know, I would hear him talk about calling a girl a bitch, but he said it in such a way that didn't sound like he was mad. It just sounded like that's how he talked. He and one day brain. I remember that actually came out of my mouth and it was like completely in frame and it sounded great. And it wasn't, it was, it wasn't even like I was, I was just sort of, it came out and I recognized, holy shit, I just said it in a natural like way that, had some kind of righteousness behind it. And that's what he would talk about. Mm -hmm. But what I did realize is like the things he would talk about, I discovered at that point after him, like Rolo and Rich and Ryan and the, Donovan and all the red pill, like the main sort of red pill people. And because they were speaking the same language as Patrice, I started listening to their content and a lot of it made sense. Yeah. And through that, I ended up finding John. Now, John was the person that sort of made it all fall into place because he had that body language mastery. We had the webinars, but I'd started yeah. dating before I found John. So I had some experience, but like just hearing that information just and hearing people ask questions and hearing the way he talked to guys, it really helped me out a lot. So were you, were you listening? You were listening to Donovan Sharp and, and uh, Rich Cooper and maybe the Rule Zero guys or even uh, uh, the 21 guys or? What kind of content? Yeah, I mean, the 21 convention <laughs> is sort of funny because there's actually some good stuff in there, but there's a lot of bad stuff too. Well, yeah, I mean, the same with MGTOW. There's a lot of very valuable information you can glean, but there's also some negative spin too, right? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the MGTOW stuff, I would hear it and I would think, this is not how I want to live. I don't want to be like mm. Black Hill and not be mm -hmm. having girls in my life. I want to have girls in my life. Yeah. Um, I knew that right going off. So I knew they had some good stuff to say, but I didn't really completely agree with the philosophy. You're a real man that has plenty of testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like some, some, some ways MGTOW is just a, is just a, a mission of failure. Um, you're, because you're not entirely wrong though. I mean, but the attitudes that can be presented. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, I found body language mastery. My, my 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 question back to to them is that's great. What are you going to do about it? That's the question, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to just live in a house by yourself and not do anything? Are you you might as well just chop your dick off at that point and drain your testosterone out? Like what? No, are no, 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 no. That's the difference. Like John and I and and, and others out there are going to look at you when you when you realize that and go good. Now, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, that's what I'd say. That's the biggest thing I did is I did something about it. I listened to John and like, it, it's funny to hear these people argue with you. And I don't think you were actually teaching with John at the time I joined. You had only been in the course like a month or two prior to me, mm -hmm. but he picked you and Ed L.A. up mm -hmm. prior to me. And then I just wasn't making a lot of contribution. I was just sort of listening in. Yeah. Yeah. And so 
yeah, it was they're really a no-nonsense course, like stop arguing. Are you the one that's scoring with girls? Then shut up and listen to what we're saying type of thing. And I still see guys arguing, and I just want to slap them in the face sometimes <laughs> because – You know, I think part of that's a necessary evil, especially with the new guys. They have to go through a little bit of ego abasement in order to get to the material because they've had that their entire lives. And it's, it's hard to swallow, but when you do, that's one of the good things about those sort of groups. Yeah. that are honest and you set you set it aside so that you can have this open discussion that is not hampered or censored as we're being censored in many other arenas in life and uh and that you can really grow from it when, when i think that's the thing that most guys need to understand about people that are like truly like i would say the word red pill is a little weird because like a lot of times especially the more liberal people will use it for whatever negative thing they have to say at the time. And it doesn't really mean the same thing in different contexts, but let's just say a regular, like real, like what I would call a red pill guy, which is somebody that understands the truth of human sexuality and human, like even the way yeah, it's apolitical, right? really, it could be a political. Absolutely. Yeah. I would say that they are forgiving of, because we've learned a lot of bad stuff. And if you just, drop the ego for a second and quit, you know, quit lying. Like guys will come in and be like, I've got a notch count of 85 and you know, they don't because they don't have a frame. They have like a notch count of five and just be honest about it. You will have 85 really soon. If you start listening and drop your ego and nobody's <laughs> going to even remember the fact. What's that? What's that? What's the uh, old PUA rule of thumb? If you're a guy, you multiply your body count by three. If you're a woman, you divide it. Are you uh, divide? Well, you know what? Two. I'll you tell you this. Yeah. When you, once you have frame, you actually don't count at all because you don't care anymore. <laughs> like, no, I, I mean, there's there's something there's some there's a lot of truth in there at a certain point. It absolutely seems like the most menial thing in the world once you reach a certain point. Right. It's like, yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. But when you're starting out, that's really important. I mean, there's a there's a lot of worry about that, you know, uh, inexperience and nerves. And, and uh, I, I totally understand. And the awkwardness. Yeah of not having those experiences. And that's where a group like this can really help guys get past it. I mean, since I'm not very monetized, I've seen that group, I mean, discuss real serious men's issues where, you know, young men are, are very um, mm -hmm. embarrassed about their performance because they just don't have experience or know better, or even know how to make it better. And they'll bring in an expert. These groups will bring in an expert, particularly MLD, mm -hmm. and talk to these guys. And Well, I even saw it. On the Rule Zero event, it was quite good, uh, and it'll give you an idea where you can acquire this knowledge and experience that you may never have before in your social circle because we're all locked down now. Well, I think just people need to understand how forgiving that group of guys is. Even if you've been a spurg in the past and you've you've done stupid stuff, they'll still forgive you. It's just if you they if you continue to go down that road and don't try to get off of it, is when we just get frustrated with the person. But as soon as the person does a 180 and starts changing their tune, everything's forgiven from the past. Everybody locks in behind them. And that's a good feeling. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I would say the guys that are like sort of new to this, the biggest thing you have to have is reference experiences. So when you think about dating, you have to think about it in a logical sequence. You're always going to introduce yourself to the girl when you show up. Right. So get that right. Hugger, find out like if your pelvises are touching, find out how much work you have to do to turn her on. Uh, you know, maybe you don't like her and you leave right away, but you at least introduced yourself to her when you first went into the place. And now order a drink, do that properly. You know, the next, you know, maybe the next 10 dates, you don't get past that. But like you just, the last part of your date, which is the close, should be the most, should be the less refined of anything. You just need to refine stuff as you go. Just make it like a lot of guys in the red pill, especially are smart guys. So they're thinking like an engineer, just treat it like that. Just methodolog methodologically start of the date, middle of the day, you know, just get better at the front end and the back end will, will follow. So Ray, I've seen you in action. There's no issues <laughs> with you creating Kino and chemistry right away, yeah. but here's the key. Uh, I saw, in you that when you decided to date you kind of put your chips all in and yeah. you went for the online meet which was for an older man quite daunting because some of these 
online sites will have an logarithm and as the man posts his age and he's truthful and he's saying this and that he might be an older man that came out of a long-term relationship and would just like nothing more than to have some companionship mm -hmm. and they get filtered to the bottom right away and by these things pretty quickly um, yeah if you had advice i mean that's where i've seen you really shine yeah when we were at the uh, hot dude con yeah. And, uh, I mean, there's some pretty hot chicks you brought in there. There was plenty of them and, uh, they were happy to be there. Yeah, no, it was, it was fun. The, the second chick, I mean, or the, it was three, one, the second one didn't want to come because there was too many people. The first one I brought, I sort of, I ejected because she wasn't really interested and she just, I mean, she was fine. We got along, but she didn't want to make out like right away. And then the third one showed up and I, she wasn't she wasn't even in the house yet i walked outside because she had texted me she was there and i don't know i just started making out with her right there in the in the um the driveway talk about spontaneity huh <laughs> like just i think she was a little shocked too but she was into it so um i would say first of all like there is an algorithm to it, like there's different types of sites there's there's the swipe sites there's tender bumble hinge there's the sugar sites they're seeking so what would you recommend to guys your age that are just listening to this? How do they get started well, and, and what do they need to know? The basics. So philosophically, you need to make yourself good first. You have to have, and I'm not saying like a young girl doesn't care about your money if you're hot, but they care that there's proof that you've done something. The younger you are, the less you can have. Like a girl's not going to show up to my place and see I live in a dump. And, and be turned on and all because she's going to figure he's a loser. He's 47 and he doesn't have a decent car in place, but she's not after money. She's just after proof that I'm what I say I am like just that example, that display. Um, so when I tell a guy like my age, you need to make sure your income is on point and you're, you're, you know, have a, you know, you, you look presentable and you're driving a decent car. I'm not saying it because you got to give the girl that. I'm just saying you need to make sure you're showing the impression that you're a successful person. So she feels like she's not wasting her time, like letting you basically put your DNA in her and it's crap DNA. I mean, that's really right. what it comes down to. So if I only could focus on one thing, I would do seeking arrangement. But that's why, because. Why that one versus the other online? Because most of the guys on there are losers and leading with their money. And if you're a hot guy, you don't need to pay a girl anything. They just, you, you've got built in value. She wants to be with you. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, maybe there's, there's a guy that's not having success on there. That's paying for a girl would never understand it. Cause he wouldn't understand what real, real desire is. Mm -hmm. But if you know what you're doing and girls think you're hot, you don't need to pay anything on that site. And there's, it's just, there's so many more, there's so much more volume you can work. It's a really online dating, any dating, even regular dating, all of it's about volume. Because if you don't have volume, you can't have abundance. And if you don't have abundance, you can't have frame. So Ray, is that the only site you use or did you test the others as well? No, I use Tinder, Bumble. And did you, did you, did you score off of all of them? Yeah, I did. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of guys ask about volume. Uh, it's yeah. out there that it, if for every, if for every hundred hits, you might get, you know, 10 dates, maybe oh, shoot, not even that many tenders. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what was the ratio? So is, is that why you're seeking was higher than that? Or was yeah, that I could basically send out 50 messages in the beginning. I could send out 50 messages on sinking mm -hmm. and I was going to get at least one close. I mean, oh, okay. I mean, with COVID it changed, maybe it was 75 to hundred, but I could still get one to two closes just by knowing, I mean, I had a methodology. I mean, you you saw it like, yeah. oh yeah. I'm I mean, really on the surface, the quality looked very good too. Very, very good. Now, was oh, yeah. it actual quality? Oh could, yeah, absolutely. Could, could, could you have saw yourself, uh, you know, uh, dating these girls for any length of time? I mean, not all of them, obviously, but some of them. I mean, I dated a few for a length of time. Yeah, you met one that was a little a sub, which you know both yeah. both are dominance, and uh, yeah. yeah, that seemed to last for a while. She seemed sweet. Uh, the sub was, I mean, I wouldn't say that was a really close relationship. It was more just a Dom sub relationship. I would, I mean, I still did the Dom thing about creating the environment where she felt safe to be a sub, but I would say the quality there in seeking was pretty good though. It, it was, yeah, boring. this girl was really cute. I mean, a lot of girls that I hooked up with in seeking were really cute. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I dated a couple for longer periods, one for about three months, one for about five months, one for a couple of months. And then I had some plates that, mm -hmm. you know, were more minor, a month and a half, three or four times. Do you still talk to any of them? Uh, no, not really. Usually when I when cut it burn, off. You burn through 50 in a year. That's an amazing feat. I know that you put a lot of effort and time in and, and yeah. You're not everybody's going to do that, but what would you say your biggest lessons were? Did you get a part way through it and have any epiphanies about dating that you could share with us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so because I did that successfully and it's really important. I mean, I, I need to stress because I know if some guys are listening and they aren't familiar with us, uh, if you, if you're going to do something like seeking, do not pay money. It is not the same thing. And, yeah. and when, when we say pay money, you're still going to do a date though. You're, that part. Well, different. yeah. If I'm going to date a girl, I do. Um, so my dates always, even with, I mean, with Tinder, Bumble, I just was working so much volume between all the different sites that I could pretty much command dates straight to the house. I would cook mm -hmm. like a $30 meal and we'd have wine and then. Yeah. I'd that's cook. what I mean. Yeah. yeah. You might but even. Pay I, for dating a girl. I, I like extravagance. I went out for a meal with my main last night, spent 150 bucks. I like nice things. Like I just, I enjoy that. I spent 300 on a meal before with a person I was already dating, but never on a first date. Never. Right. You know, right, right. Of course. Never. Yeah. When you're with one of your favorite humans, it's much yeah. better. But what I'm saying is with seeking, some girls are there to be sugar babies, right? They want guys to give them cash. And I'm saying never leave with your wallet. You don't need to. If you're hot, the girls don't want your money. Out of all the girls, what was the percentage that, that led with that? For me, I mean, I was had such a tight filter, very few. I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I had such, um, no, usually nobody once they met me was even interested in that. That's fantastic. I mean, there's some knowledge right there. I hope you write yeah. a book. Yeah. Oh, I plan on it. Definitely. Good. You'll come back on here after you write that book, right? Yeah, absolutely. I would say, I mean, once a girl, if a girl thinks you're hot, she wants to sleep with you. She doesn't want money. She wants to sleep with you. Um, yeah. She wants that experience. Right. And I think yeah. you pretty much did that. I mean, you gave experiences, but the reason I want to say, I want to, I want to like emphasize that so much is you won't have this frame that I'm about to suggest if you've paid. And that is you want to be in a situation like right now I've slowed down on dating. It was, it was pretty tiring to date that much. I was on online a lot during that year and it really does detract from my ability to improve my position at work and produce, uh, improve my personal work position, like for my own personal company and make my body better. So it really does interfere with that timing. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is I now can date better because like more like a focused person that I can actually have a relationship with because I know that if I'm single, I'm going to be great. And I think most guys have never had that in their life where they feel like if I'm single, it's going to be great. I know if like something goes south, I don't need to have investment into chasing a girl down because if she wants to leave, I'm still going to be awesome because I can just go right back to what I was doing. And that was not a bad life. That was a good life. So now for some, that's a really tough mindset to get to. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I think you need to, that's what I would say to getting that mindset. Well, first I'd say you need to have that mindset. There's, a, I think John has said like things like date a hundred, you know, close a hundred girls before you consider a relationship. I think the trick is actually know that you can close girls anytime you want and don't have a scarcity mindset before you can do a relationship because it's really a mindset thing. It's really not a hard number issue. And it really came down to abundance. I mean, take LA, for example, that cute little girl I brought in that liked you better. Like we know, like she hey, did. Hey, hey, we must be discreet on this channel. <laughs> but no, I mean, you weren't doing anything but being yourself. But what I'm saying is an abundance mindset, like a guy that didn't have it, would get all upset about that. Mm. And there's no need. There's so many other options out there. Why get upset? Yeah. No, that was, that was really fun too. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a great red pill moment. Like, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't trying to do anything there and take no. A date. <laughs> no, it was fine. It was cool. She, she wanted to stand close. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she's a sweetie, man. She really was. Yeah, was you nice. know. I mean, you picked good there, kind of. Yeah, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, if you were that's really to nice too. God, she was an yeah. incredible kisser. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I said my my. I think I said my. Right, so it's shifting gears now. Yeah. <laughs> back back to you. What 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 if anything you could say was your real epiphany after you had been through these dates that you didn't know before you started this journey? Um. Other than the amount of work it was to make your goal. Yeah, that goal for a wedding. One thing that that just said, "Wow, male female intersexual dynamics is just it's a little different than I thought it was." And if I could tell these older guys what to look for, or if there was any one lesson, what would you give them? Well, I know, I know that I like have zero resentment to girls anymore. I feel like if you have any kind of resentment to the fact that like you feel like girls are holding this host this like this this thing hostage over you which is the sex you want then you're you need to sort you need to look inward and figure out where you're you know where you're missing the boat where you're going wrong because mm. it's definitely not it's not a them problem it's a you problem at that point oh boy i'd agree there yeah and i think you just have to understand that girls and guys are different and also don't go under the path of thinking girls are any less value or, or any less valuable than you are just because you're a guy. That's the thing we hear in the red pill a lot. Like, and it's unfortunate that like people, I think the people that don't have frame yet don't understand that we're not saying girls are less valuable. Girls are just different. And you have to understand there's different dynamic in the way you have to treat the relationship with them. Um, so, and don't get upset about it. Just learn it and do it, be able to adapt to it. That's the, you know, like if you, if you can't adapt, then that's your own problem. I mean, things aren't going to change because you like them. You want them to change. You're going to, you know. Yeah. Well, you've certainly, you certainly have. I've seen it in person, and uh, the the quality is really there. It intrigues me considerably. And if 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 we were to look at our listeners, both older guys, particularly the ones that think that the life is over, I can rest assured, it is not over. I'm 68 years old, and they're is just beginning in many, many different ways. Uh, I think that Ray would agree with that. It's all about what's in your head and what's in your heart and how you mold your life. Get on the dragon ship and row. Let's go um, and live the dream. It, Ray, if you were going to recommend where guys would get more knowledge, let's go down your list of where you would send them to get training and knowledge on how to, how to live the dream and accomplish what they want when dealing with women or, or male, female sexual dynamics, where would they go for all this stuff? Well, I mean, there's a lot of online resources. Uh, I think I really don't need to consume red pill content like I did in the beginning, but I'd say really you need to consume some red pill content mm -hmm. um, day over day in the beginning until you embody it. till you get to a point to where sort of where I am now, which is, uh, I've heard this a thousand times, you know, I don't need to hear it again. Um, but I think the the sort of primary people in the space are really good to listen to, like Rolo and Rich. Um, yeah. Have you read Rolo's book? I have it. I have, I'm a horrible reader. I, I totally have That one is worth getting. The first one is worth getting. It's a dry read, but you can listen to it on audio and it's, it's yeah. very intellectual. It is not flattering, but I have... Uh, it is an amazing book. There has been women in my life who have read that book, looked at me in the face and said, that's, that's kind of pisses me off, but I'm buying this book for each one of our sons. <laughs> but we know it's true. Because <laughs> it's true. Um, um, I would say, like, get in, like, John's, I don't know what his new branding is going to be after this year. Like, the Body Language Mastery really changed my life. Um, the Men's I'm, Empowerment Network. I, I'm looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big supporter of John's. He... Same. Really, like everything I got out of it, or everything I put into it, I got out of it tenfold. Yeah, oh, for sure. And then, you know, I just read uh, Rich Cooper's book. What yeah. a cool primer. Now, I don't agree 100% with that guy, but if it came push to shove, I'd be standing by him on all of it because, you know, even though he's he's been embittered by a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm much like him and that I'm a burn survivor as well, but he, he, he hasn't delved quite as intellectually mm -hmm. as, as uh, Rolo has, but it, it's almost like an introductory or a summary mm -hmm. in, in a different format, which makes it an easier read, shall I say? Yeah. Which is really good because uh, I, I, I would almost recommend 
for sure that's a must read and then go into Rollo's book and you'll have a very strong concept by the time you finish the Iron Rules of Tomasi on where you can have a foundation on how you approach dating and relationships, even long-term relationships. Long marriages would fit into this as well if you're trying to maintain attraction or even yeah. ramp it up from where it was if it's a little stale. It's very good go. information to know. On I mean, LTRs do not preclude having to know and practice the red pill truths that you know. Absolutely. Um, but when it comes to like you were saying that, I would also, I think a, a word of warning is don't just become a red pill dictionary knowledge bank because that's not getting you anywhere. Just knowing, like rehashing what somebody else has said and just saying it again and not embodying it or this is not say test it, guys. Test it and realize that it even Rolo Tomasi would say this is a praxology. It is yeah. a loose science. It yeah. flows like water. So, you know, it's it's solid. You can move it around a little bit and in and, and use it to your advantage. It is a tool, yeah. it's a valuable tool to know. And Whichever definitely don't be afraid it. to um don't be afraid to take chances. There are plenty that's the thing. There's a lot of girls out there. You can you can screw around a little bit. You can you can push the limits a bit. If they go away, so what? There's another one like right around the corner. That's the big that's a big thing I got is I had so much volume, I could just push the limits. And sometimes it works, sometimes it didn't. And then I found a sort of sweet spot that just works for me. If I want to get a date, I can get a date with him. I can, like, if I decide, hey, this, I mean, what I do really now is I have a main girl. Mm -hmm. And what I'll do is about every two to three weeks, maybe four, I just get the need to have another girl. And then I'll just, like, take a couple of days, set a few dates. And ha Have you pushed it into harem game yet where the girls know each other and all that sort of thing? Um, I have not, but only because I've really been concentrating on business this year. No and worries. I just really wanted it, it. I don't know. I mean, my optimal, if I was going to run multiple girls is going to be three girls. I know I've tried to run five and it's just, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, so, you know, guys that say they want to run 10, I'm like, I don't think you realize how much work 10 is unless you're independently wealthy and you don't need to work at all. And you can just spend all your time running these girls. It's just not practical so th there are a few guys out there this will be your second book <laughs> your next goal is yeah. where they run some harem game and the girls actually know each other and get along yeah i'd like to do that for sure that's my goal when it comes to the end I, I like like look i love guys like um mr lucario that just got married his third wife you know? mm -hmm. um so there's a lot of knowledge out there yeah and then there's abu out there too abu american yeah yeah. Oh man, you know what was cool to meet in LA it was Afi. That guy was killer. <laughs> oh man, I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, he was really cool. I like that. Yeah, he is really cool. He lives right up from me. If, if you guys come to town, you and your buddy, uh, we should all get together. Oh, for sure. I'd like to do that. That'd be fantastic. We have to. Uh, we'll have to do that. We'll come up yeah. there. And we'll uh, visit Afi too. So. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. Cool, yeah, man. For Maybe sure. Um. No, I appreciate you coming on the Dragon Ship and sharing your experiences. And just to let everybody know, this guy, Ray, knows what he's talking about. And I think he's going to let us know how people can get in contact with him. He is going to make some limited time available to some of these gentlemen that might want to pick his brain. He's very thorough. He's like an engineer. He has kept records of this entire journey. So I have. I have. Uh, so, Ray, how would people get a hold of you if they wanted to get some counseling on such said activities? So I've got a, um, another business I'm working on. I set up an email for it. Um, it's Daddy Feel Good, D-A-D-D-Y-F-E-E-L-G-O-O-D at ProtonMail.com. Also, um, I'm on Telegram under the same handle, Daddy Feel Good, um, and you can DM me there. So, yeah, if, if, if anyone needs any advice or wants some like just basic game, I can help them out with that. My text game is pretty solid. Uh, I used to wonder, I used to be uh, in a situation where it just sort of things started coming out of my mouth and I just realized I know what I'm talking about. And it just went from. I got a great idea. Yeah. Let's have you back on the dragon ship. We'll get some Perfect. actual examples and put them on screen and have you walk us yeah, through. I'll I'll do that. I've done that. You've seen my, have you seen my breakdowns? Yes. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. I would love to Ray. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to get you back on the dragon ship. Perfect. Sounds great. And, of course, you can always uh, reach me at Red Pill 4, IG at Red Pill 4. 
and I'm available for lifestyle uh, counseling as well, health, fitness, uh, and many other uh, aspects of lifestyle. Um, happy to have you. Give me a give me a DM, and uh, I think we'll uh, go ahead. And you have anything else that you'd like to add there? No, Brother? just reach out if you need me. All right, we'll do that, and see you guys later. Thanks.